Good morning. Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. We will be having Christmas Eve services on the 24th at 4.30 over at Faith and here at St. James at 7 o'clock. We will also provide a video. We hope that you can join us for one of those occasions. We continue now with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord continued speaking with Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together select verses from Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first chapter of Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son and he named him Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
You wouldn't have known it by looking at him. I had no idea until it was shared during our devotions time. His wife had been in the hospital for two full weeks. And during that time, she had been near death. There had been complication after complication. Just when they would manage one thing, another problem would arise. And now she was still away from home, going through rehab, trying to gain back what had been lost. He shared that his prayers had been all too similar to what we heard this morning in this psalm. Restore us, O Lord. Save us. Restore us, O God, and we shall be saved. Let your face shine upon us. He talked of prayers, of begging, pleading for his wife to be healed, for her to be free from the pain, the discomfort, from the suffering she was enduring. Even prayers that had been questioning, much like we heard in this psalm. Oh Lord God, oh Lord, how long will your anger fume against your people? When we pray, he questioned. <coughs> excuse me. He questioned whether, whether this illness, this suffering that his wife was enduring, was some kind of judgment, some kind of punishment. He questioned why she had to endure all of this. Even as a person of tremendous faith, even as a pastor, someone who had been through years of theological training, who knows, who lives his life proclaiming God's abundant grace and mercy, who knows that God's will is not to inflict suffering on God's people. But in those moments of despair, he he needed more. He needed that assurance. He needed someone else to come in and proclaim what his heart in that moment could not. He needed that assurance of Emmanuel, of God with us, of God with him and with his wife in that time. He needed it to be proclaimed to him fresh and anew. He needed someone to help him recognize God's presence with him, alongside him and his wife in these moments, that God had not abandoned or forsaken him, that God had not caused this, but that God was entering into that suffering with them and helping them to bear it. He needed someone to help him believe this again to believe in that grace and mercy and love of God. It's that same saving presence, that presence of Emmanuel, that the prophet Isaiah is trying to proclaim to King Ahaz. In that first reading, we heard from the prophet Isaiah. Now, in this story, in this moment, King Ahaz has been caught in the middle King Ahaz currently rules over Judah, over that kingdom that rests just south of Syria and Israel. And the kings of Syria and Israel are asking him to form an alliance with them because they see the emerging empire of Assyria coming to devastate their lands. And they want King Ahaz to join with them, that they might together attempt to defeat this Assyrian empire. But Ahaz wants no part in it. So he turns to God for help. And we come in mid-conversation in this, in this conversation with God, and God sends word through the prophet Isaiah telling Ahaz to trust in the Lord, to believe in God's word that God has proclaimed, to believe in God will protect and establish Ahaz and the Davidic kingdom. But Ahaz, Ahaz doesn't believe it. 
Ahaz has already turned to a more human solution. He's already reached out to that Assyrian Empire, trusting that it might protect him and his people. And so he almost self-righteously responds to God, saying, I will not. I will not put the Lord my God to the test. But God isn't having any of it. And God responds back through Isaiah that God will give Ahaz a sign, that God is tired of being wearied by these mortals, and God will promise this to Ahaz. God will be with the people. God, through the birth of a son by a young woman, or as we translate it sometimes, a virgin, God will save them. God will send a son named Emmanuel, God with us. But for this to happen, Ahaz must trust, must have faith, must believe in what God proclaims God will do. Which, unfortunately, Ahaz in his actions proves that he does not. He does not trust, does not trust in God. And much like his ancestors before him, has that falter of faith. Like Abraham and Sarah, when they attempted to take matters into their own hands, when Moses took matters into his own hands and used his own power instead of trusting in God to protect and provide for them, Ahaz falters. And it fails. The kingdom falls into desertion. They are devastated, and they fall under that Assyrian rule. God's promise holds fast. God's promise of Emmanuel, of God's Son, of God with us, it holds true. And hundreds of years later, we come to Joseph. We come to this moment when God sees again that the way to rescue God's people now is through God's very self, through this promise that God made with God's people generations before that God will bring this son into this world through this literal, now physical presence of Emmanuel, God with the people, God come into flesh and bone, God born as this baby formed by the Holy Spirit in this young woman. But Joseph, her betrothed, Joseph, like his ancestor Ahaz, isn't so sure. How is he to know that this baby that Mary carries isn't the result of some illicit trust? How is he to know that this is not some betrayal? How is he to know how they will endure the ridicule? That they will raise a child that is not his? What will their lives be like? Not just in these days ahead as he is urged to follow those those rules and customs that say she is to be stoned to death for her betrayal. But what will their lives be like their whole, whole lives long? Will this scandal follow them forever? What should Joseph believe? And so it is this angel of the Lord who comes to Joseph in this dream, much like the prophet speaking to Ahaz, much like the way that God spoke to his ancestor Jacob and Joseph years before. The angel proclaims to Joseph in a dream who this baby really is. That this baby that Mary carries is of the Holy Spirit, that it is not a betrayal, but it is God's will, God's very flesh, come into this world. That this is God's very Son who has come to earth to save the people. That Joseph is to name him Jesus. That, that variation of the word the Lord saves to name him what he has come to do. That his Son, that he will raise save the people from their sins. It is that promise that Isaiah proclaimed to Ahaz hundreds of years before finally coming to fruition. God, God with us, come to this earth. This is truly Emmanuel. God with us. 
This is God come down to human form to save the world. And so Joseph, believing, trusting, listening to that angel, he raises Mary and raises Jesus. He marries this woman. He carries the son and he protects and cares for this family through these difficult and tumultuous times. Joseph believes and trusts and comes to know Emmanuel, God with us. And so today it is that same promise that we now carry into the world. It is this promise that we hold on to in our own lives. What we proclaim, what we live out, what we share with one another, especially in those moments when we ourselves are struggling in crisis or despair, especially when we are confronted with those times like my colleague in the faith. We make sure that this is known to them, especially in those moments when we cannot claim it for ourselves. We share it with one another. We proclaim that God is with us that God comes into our midst, that God enters into our suffering, God enters into our celebrations, God comes in and dwells with us and surrounds us with God's presence, helping us to bear, to, to live through whatever it is we experience. God is with us, especially in those moments when it feels like the the ugliness, the hate, the sin and evil of this world are winning out when our hearts are heavy, when hope feels lost. This, this is the promise to which we turn to, the promise proclaimed to Ahaz, the promise proclaimed again and again to God's people, the promise proclaimed to Joseph, the promise that Jesus proclaimed himself as he ascended back to heaven. I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the promise we hold on to, that through this baby, through God's son, through God's very self, who lived and died and rose again, this God who promises that God is with us, this is what we trust in. This is what we hold on to, what we tell one another, what we proclaim to ourselves, to our world. This is God's promise with us. And so we hold on to this, to this promise of Emmanuel, to this promise that God will not forsake us or abandon us, but that God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us always. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we serve and love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats in peril due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights, especially Amnesty International. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our helper, come to the, the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship, and we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel, heal the sick, and speed their recovery. We especially pray for Carol, Vivian, Virginia, Albert, Richard, Roger, Nancy, and we pray for those who grieve, especially the families of Deb and Jack. We pray that you will bless Jake and Kendra's family with life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope you bring life out of death, and you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise, and bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you.
abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need, until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your Son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on the bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust in this gift of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, for wherever we are gathered, God is there. shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you.